Good afternoon. We have today is a very special day. Let us pray for a young girl who turned 15 celebrating the great celebration, the Mexican tradition. So here she is here to thank the Lord. Let us continue to pray for her so that the good Lord continue to shower his blessings upon her and her future. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, as we all gather together as one family, let us humbly acknowledge our sins, and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, O Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord our God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A 
reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower. He hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing. Break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see, bloodshed. For justice, but hark, the outcry. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it into a tenant and went to on a journey. When the vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his products. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and the third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants more than numerous than the first ones. But they treat them at the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and inquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? He answered him, they will put those grass men to a grass death, at least his vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, do you never read, read the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. But the Lord has this been done, and it is a wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruits. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we are in the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time in the liturgical year A. I would like to begin with a quiz because last week I only celebrated a 3.30 Mass. I know that the same people here, so what I have told, probably kind of reviewing what we have discussed last week, last Saturday. I would like to ask how many covenants are there in the Old Testament? Do you remember that I have mentioned last week about the covenants? Yes, somebody is showing their fingers. Say it loud so that I am, I am kind of deaf probably. If somebody speaks loud, it we have four covenants. So last Sunday we discussed about the first covenant, the covenant with Noah, that I have mentioned it, but I have not mentioned the other three covenants, but I remember. There are four covenants. The first covenant with Noah, that God is promising Noah that, oh, I will never destroy the people again. I will never destroy the world again. That is the first promise. The second promise, the, the second covenant is with the, the covenant with Abraham, that your descendants will be the stars in heaven, the star, your descendants like stars in heaven, plenty. That was the promise with Abraham. And then the four, third covenant is with Moses. He, God promised to Moses that the people of Israel will be the chosen people. And I give my commandments to live. I give my commandments. He gave the law. And the fourth covenant is with King David. The covenant with King David. What was the covenant with King David? What did God promise to King David? 
What did God promise? What was the covenant? A Messiah will be born in the lineage, in the line of David, right? Of course, Jesus was born in the family of David. So these were the four covenant. So what I was trying to, last week I was trying to explain that God, our God is not a punishing God. He's not a revenging God. He doesn't revenge, revenge with anybody. He already promised, he made a promise that of course he is not going to punish, he is not going to destroy the world again. So here comes today's gospel is also is the continuation of the last, go last Sunday's gospel. We, we started that Jesus' solemn entry to Jerusalem that indicates what? That we celebrate when Jesus entered to the Jerusalem. So what do you do? Jesus and his disciples went to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. And he was welcomed by the people. And what do we usually Catholic celebrate? Palm Sunday. So we are in the Holy Week. So last Sunday, we celebrated the Palm Sunday. Now, of course, not in the liturgical year, but in, like, in the Gospel of Matthew. But today, we are in the Holy Week Monday. Because last Sunday, Jesus entered into the Jerusalem temple. You know that what had happened there. Jesus went to Jerusalem temple and there he saw people were selling and you know chased them away and the chief priest and the Pharisees the scribes and the chief priest asked questions what authority are you doing all these things and he you know that there was a long conversation and Jesus asked about what is your opinion and he said a parable about two sons the first son the father is asking the first son my son please go to the vineyard and work he said first he said no second he repented and he went and worked for his father the second son said yes but he never went so we discussed about that one last Sunday but today again now is we enter into the Holy Week Monday that probably that night he might have gone to stay with stayed with Lazarus family which is in Bethany like three kilometers away from Jerusalem from Jerusalem to Bethany is na it's like 3 kilometer, 40 minutes walk. Probably my test, of course, Lazarus was the best friend of Jesus. He might have stayed there uh, with, with Lazarus and family. And again, he's back to Jerusalem the very Monday. And there comes, probably he might have encountered the scribes and Pharisees at the portico of Solomon. But Matthew never mentioned in the gospel. But According to my understanding, that probably he might have encountered uh, the scribes and Pharisees in the portico of Solomon. This is a long corridor like this. If you see, if you Google it, you can see the portico of Solomon. It's like a long corridor. It's a long. So probably even uh, Peter and James, they also started to proclaim the word of God in the portico of Solomon. And here, Jesus is again confronting with this scribe, and scribes and the Pharisees, the chief priest. Again, he's saying a parable, a beautiful parable. This time he's talking about himself. He's foretelling about his future that is going to happen in few days time. What is going to happen to him in few days time? We are already in the Holy Week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Wednesday. Thursday, he celebrates his Passover meal. And Friday has been crucified, that you know. That is what exactly is reflected in today's parable. A farmer had a vineyard. He bought a vineyard. He planted. He built a fence around it. And he leased to the tenants and went for a journey. When the time of harvest he sent his servants. And what had happened? Some, they smashed them out. Some, they stoned to death. And some, they killed him. And finally, he sent his 
son, only son. Oh, they would ref definitely respect my son. Then what had happened? They killed him. Oh, he is the honor. He is the honor. They killed him. And today's gospel is somehow similar with the first reading of today. It's the prophet Isaiah. It's the same, the parallel gospel. Matthew was trying to say is that what has prophet Isaiah prophesied about Jesus has been fulfilled. He's already spoken. It's a parallel gospel. In the first reading we heard a man. He went to a fertile land. He removed all the stones. Again, he planted vines there. He built a fence. And he planted the choicest grapes. Very special. Sometimes, you know, there are different varieties. But he, the best quality wine, the grapes that he planted. But unfortunately, what happened? At the end, he received the wild grapes. He could not enjoy the fruit. He was disappointed, a melancholic master. Today's gospel is somehow similar, but here it's different. The fruit is plentiful, of course. The time of harvest, he is sending his own son, but people did not accept him. The tenants did not accept the son, and he killed him. What does it mean? What is the meaning of that? Who were the tenants? Who were the servants? The master sent the servants first. What does it indicate? Who were the servants? Is there any connection between the Old Testament? What does it indicate? The servants were the prophets. You know in the story of Old Testament, in the Old Testament, God sent a lot of prophets. Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah. So many prophets. Because people of Israel, the ch God's chosen people, that is what the promise that he made with Moses, that your people, the people of Israel will be my chosen people. But what had happened? God sent Moses to save these people from the hand of Pharaoh, from the slavery of Egypt. They were slaves. And God saved these people. God sent Moses and saved them. Then what had happened? They forgot everything. They forgot the mercy of God. They forgot everything that God has done to them. They wandered before they entered into the promised land. God promised them a promised land where there is, uh, is, is a land of milk and honey, flowing milk and honey. It's a green land. But they could not enter the promised land very early. But they were wandering. Almost 40 years. They could not enter right away. When they were saved from Egypt, and they crossed this Red Sea. And what happened? They were wandering because they, were, they turned against God. They started to worship idols, pagan gods. And God sent different, way, different prophets. Dear people, no, believe in the true God. Change your way of living. Repent. But people did not listen to those prophets. What happened? Though some prophets have, they humiliated them, they insulted them, they some even experienced death. Some they killed them. That's what exactly today's gospel is trying to say. Jesus said, so many prophets, so many prophets have told about the Messiah. Prominent, so many prof prophets prophesied, there is a Messiah. Don't worry, people of Israel, now you are in great agony because of your sin. And God is so merciful to you. God is going to send a Messiah to you. But people, the so-called scribes and Pharisees thinking that they know the Torah. What is Torah? The law, the first five books of the Bible. The book of laws. They think that they know the everything. They are the perfect people. But yet they could not recognize the Messiah. And now God has sent his own beloved son. The prophecy has been fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Now Jesus Christ is there in the midst. He is talking about him. The Messiah is here. What they are going to do? Jesus is already foretelling about what is going to happen. The Messiah, the, the son, the son, the, the master sent the son 
and the land the tenants killed him that is exactly what's going to happen to Jesus Jesus is been going to be crucified in few days time according to the gospel of Matthew so what is the meaning of this we have the bible we listen to the word of god every day i would say my dear brothers and sisters in a family if you read bible every day you are living with god you are living with jesus when you read the bible if you have time if you are if you are able to spend time with the bible if you are able to read the bible every day that means you are automatically living in the presence of the lord how how it is possible reading the bible how can i live in the presence of the lord the miracle is that it's already happened 2000 years ago the miracle already took place what is the bible teaching us what is the bible teaching us the word the word god what happened the word of god became flesh the word of god became flesh in jesus christ so who is the word of god jesus christ himself so my dear brothers and sisters if you are able when you are able to read when you read the bible that is what that is the miracle taking place when you read the bible in your home every day if you are if you have time to read the bible every day you are inviting jesus into your home that is the thing you are inviting jesus himself into your house because word of god became flesh but very very often we don't do that we don't have time we are preoccupied we are preoccupied god is not asking the whole time of your life just 10 minutes just 15 minutes or half an hour maximum you have 24 hours in a day how much time that you spend with the lord who is ready to come to visit your family who is ready to come and bless your house who is ready to live with you who is ready to bless you but how many of you would spend time with the lord it's very painful because he loves us so much we believe that he died for us he suffered for us he could have just bypassed his suffering he could have just bypassed his death but he did not he underwent suffering he suffered for us he suffered for you and me he died on the cross for you and me that must be our faith that man at least with at least that can take into consideration the suffering that he underwent for me and you if you are able to spend time for, for him 10 minutes in a day he probably some people say father i don't know how to pray i really do not know how to pray but it's not necessary that you have to take the rosary and stand in knee and lift your hands and pray no you just be with the lord just spend quietly just spend time quietly with the lord that is enough if you are able to do that you are already accepting jesus christ as a messiah you are accepting that he is the only source of my salvation he is the source of my salvation what happened to those people people who accepted the sinners accepted jesus the prostitute accepted jesus who was, who, who was the last prophet john the baptist who accepted him the sinners went to him and get baptized and repented the prostitutes went to him that got baptized we have to humbly acknowledge the inner conversion must take place within us is very important my dear brothers and sisters reading the word of god is not enough oh i read i listen to the word of god but living the word of god is most important living every day you must live in the word of god and you will receive blessings the so first thing that you have to do accept jesus as a true messiah he is a true god he is the only one can save us 
He is the only one who can solve all our problems. That must be our faith. This morning I had a baptism and after that we had a little water, blessed water left. And I told the family, you can take this water to your home and you can bless it. And uh, they were kind of, you know, what is the point of it? I said, if you don't have faith, this water remains simple water. It's nothing. It's not it's going to affect it. But if you have faith, if you have faith, oh, this is the holy water, it's blessed water, and that something happens. That makes difference. With faith, if you, with faith, if you receive the Holy Eucharist, the miracle takes place. Otherwise, it's, simple, it's an ordinary bread. Nothing is going to affect you. When you come in line to receive Holy Communion, and you must believe that you must be able to profess that I am going to receive the living Jesus today. If you are able to profess that, with that faith, if you receive Jesus, the miracle is going to take and play, going to happen in your life. The miracle is going to take place. But otherwise, simply, oh, for the sake of the body of Christ, amen. That is nothing is going to affect. Nothing is going to affect. So dear brothers and sisters, what is most the message of today's gospel is accepting Jesus as the true God, true Messiah. He is the only person who can solve us, solve all our problems in our lives. And the second thing is you have to spend time for the Lord, reading the word of God and being with him at least if you are able to give your time, a little bit of time with the Lord. God is going to live in your family. And if God is with you, if God is living in your family, nobody can destroy you. No evil can come and harm you. That must be our faith. So dear brothers and sisters, Bible, Hebrews, letter to the Hebrews, Bible is a powerful weapon. It's a powerful weapon. Believe it or not, a family who reads the Bible every day will have plenty of blessings, numerous blessings. No evil can destroy. No problem, no sickness, nothing will take place. Because this is very powerful. Because the Bible is the word of God, became flesh, and Jesus himself is coming to your family. Jesus is a good physician. And if Jesus is there, no <laughs> sickness, nothing will be there. So that must be our faith. So let us have strong faith in Jesus. That Jesus is the only person who can solve all our problems. Let us profess with great faith. Amen. Kindly stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, true God from true God. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we all gather together as one family, let us raise our voice and petition to our Heavenly Father. Let us pray for the church that we may be made worthy of producing good fruits to build the kingdom of God. Let us pray for those living in regions 
of the world marked by ongoing hostilities and resentments. Let us pray that we may foster and encourage a true and lasting respect for all human life, especially for those most vulnerable. pray for those working on the fields. May they be paid a just wage and treat, me, treat them uh, humanly. For our parish community, may we work together to bear fruits that helps our neighbors and materially and spiritually. Let us pray for those who are ill and for those who have died. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish for whom this Mass is offered in a particular way. Father, we thank you. Today, in a very special way, we pray for this young girl, Christo, who has come in front of your altar to thank you for the gift of life. Send your Holy Spirit upon her, enlighten her, strengthen her, so that she may experience your merciful love in her life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. May your mercy beseech you, O Lord, be with your people who cry to you, so that what they seek at your prompting they may obtain by your ready generosity through Christ our Lord. Story, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become our bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer you. Fruit of the wine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours 
may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for you laid the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons you formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through christ our lord and so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration, we sing. This is a very precious moment, my dear brothers and sisters. In this very moment, this ordinary bread and this ordinary wine is going to become the body and blood of Christ. Let us put forward all our personal intentions. Let us have strong faith that Jesus is our only Savior. Let us also pray for our young girl, Christo. May she experience Christ in her life. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all the few, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered together in one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and Holy Martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The body of Christ. Kindly remains, remain in your place 
the priest and the minister would come to you for a communion.
so come come front here right in front stand there facing the altar loving god you created all the people of the world and you know each of us by name we thank you for crystal who, who today celebrates her 15th birthday bless her with your love and friendship that she may grow in wisdom knowledge and grace may she love her family always and be faithful to her friends grant this through christ our lord Amen. congratulations now you can offer the flowers to mama mary the flower to mama mary Somebody hold the mic, please get the mic from her hand. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we, we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, the Mass is ended. A wonderful evening. God bless. God bless you, sister. God bless you. Okay, bendiciones. Yeah, there's an announcement, please. Quick announcement. Uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday, October 7th, Archbishop Gomez will be leading a rosary for the needs of our country uh, from the cathedral at 12 o'clock noon. To be joined at LA Catholics Facebook page. That's this Wednesday, October 7th, on the LA Catholics Facebook page.